segment on Get Up. They'll be breaking down Game 4 of the Yankees Red Sox series and much more from the NFL and college football. Right now, though, it's time for you and me and Method Man to keep it moving. Jalen Rose, not everything is worth discussing. If you would like to discuss the topic, you say hit the brakes. If you would not like to discuss the topic, me, you, and Method Man, just keep it moving. Are you ready? Let's get it. Dana White has some information about a potential Khabib Connor rematch. Hit the brakes. I was all in. Dana White said that immediately... Conor McGregor has already reached out to him and asked for a quick turnaround rematch. Do you think Dana White should grant him this rematch? Yes, he should grant oh, the no. rematch. It's, it's a, and unlike you, I'm excited to see it. The problem with it is what happened post-fight with Khabib, everybody saw that take place, and somebody from his entourage jumped into the ring to confront Conor. Mm-hmm. What people aren't anticipating... Connor's response and he's not going to take this too lightly and I'm just trying to figure how they're going to go weeks promoting the second fight being in the same place at the same time when the bad blood has not only spilled out of the octagon but it's personal remember Conor McGregor before the fight mind you a fight that he knew he might lose he signed a deal with UFC there was a multi-fight deal what Conor needs to do for himself and what the UFC needs to do for him is put him out there and get him a win or two before the rematch against Khabib. That's what I would do if I were then, because that's the best business decision for all parties. It ain't the best for Conor because he already got his bread. He like, I want to fight Khabib. He's, got, he he's not getting his bread like unless it he does the fight. Yes, if but, he gets two straight losses, that's not good for Conor. But McGregor. the bottom line is, fight number two, same Same result. exact thing. That's why I don't think it's a good idea. Next, of course, whenever there's a big fight, there's new information from Floyd Mayweather about a fight he's going to be in. Keep moving or hit the brakes. I don't think Floyd is fighting again unless it's against Manny because that's easy money for him. Keep it moving. Okay. We keep it moving. We keep it moving. The Red Sox beat the brakes off the Yankees hit last the brakes. night. Hit in New York. I was watching the game. It, it got boring. It got fascinating. I mean, it piled on and ended up being 16-1. to 1, And then a dude hit for the cycle. And this is the interesting <laughs> part for me. Severino showed up to the bullpen about 10 minutes before the first pitch of the game. What do you think about that part? That's not his normal preparation. And as an athlete or as what a lot of successful people will tell you is time management is key. And if approach whether you're somebody that's superstitious and baseball players usually are. A lot of routines. They have routines routine games, yeah. that they have to go through in order to give themselves in their mind, in their mind optimum performance so if that was disrupted you clearly see the result of it here's what happened he thought the game started at 8 20 they had a, they had a game this series that started at 8 20 he just messed up and he'll never say it into a microphone but i bet he told his best friends like, oh i thought the game started at 8 20 i didn't know it was at 40. <laughs> moving on a newscaster in philly has a way to fix the eagles he wants them to stop having sex Keep it moving or hit the break. That's a little too personal. Keep it moving. Okay. Jamie be moving up. Jacoby moving. You know we keep it moving up. Draymond Green, although they won the championship, is still a little bitter break. about something that happened. Draymond Green says that he should have been first team all defense of the year. Let's listen to him speak about it. I'm second team all defense. That's crazy. Uh, probably a little bit on me, but I, I don't think any voter can tell me five defensive players better than me. I'll wait. I spent all morning, me and you had this conversation at length, and I tried to come up with five that were better than him, and I was reaching. You I was, was really reaching. reaching. One of you was really like Patrick reaching. Beverly. I'm I was like, reaching. man, you going to the I, I saw a challenge. I tried to accept the challenge, but I will say to you, to Draymond and to all NBA fans, there are not five defensive players better than Draymond in the game right now. I like that he's owning this because playing defense is something that makes the team better. It's not like he's saying, throw me the ball more. It's yeah. not like saying he wants more shots. He's actively taking a role in knowing on certain possessions, and this gets thrown around a lot with like LeBron James, for example, but it's not true. Draymond Green is the one player in the league, Anthony Davis is in the conversation, that at different points of the game, they actually guard five positions. Yes. 
it's not hype. It's yeah. not hyperbole. It actually takes place. And so for that level of productivity on that end of the floor, I definitely can't name five guys better. And as a voter, I'm almost sure I had them first team. And not only that, is you know guys that make clutch shots? Like guys just happen to just come up when the team needs it the most. He's like a clutch defender. Like in clutch possessions, he ends up getting a steal or knocking off somebody or blocking a shot or getting a rebound. I love Draymond Green so much. And have him come on the show. Can you text him? I got you. I want him on the show. Please. He said he will. I want him to replace you when he gets retired, too. <laughs> Moving on. Liam Neeson, the actor, claims that a horse remembered him from a previous keep movie role in which they worked together. Keep oh, keep nah, on that. Keep it nah, horse nah. Right, a horse recognized nah, him? Nah. He got recognized by a horse? Nah, nah. I ain't rolling. What? That's a home. That, what's we that, keep moving what, on that. Not the Home Alone guy. What's the movie when he was trying to get his daughter back? Taken. Yeah. A former number one overall pick could be coming off the bench. In this the is second great. Half. This is just bizarre to me. Okay, so Brett Brown came out, and remember, it's early October. He came out and said that Markel Fultz will likely be starting the first half, but not starting the second half. This makes no sense to me. Why is he doing this? This means the organization has told the coach that their number one overall pick must start. It must mean that. Because the season hasn't started. So, therefore, you're already taking him out of the lineup for the second half of games. So what if he had 25 in the first half? Exactly. What, if, what if I've got, like, 25 and six assists? And I'm, I've only missed three shots. You're really going to look at me in the face at halftime and be like, oh, well, I guess, I guess, you're, I guess we're going to put Covington in your spot right now. I mean, that would make me crazy. Like, the idea that you would say this in mid-October and just be like, oh, we're going to put J.J. Redick in there for the second half. He's got a better three percentage. I'm just like, what? You see what just happened? Why would you do this in October? It makes no sense to me. It whatsoever. makes no sense. Coming up next on Jalen and Jacoby. Not to bring him off the bench or start him, to discuss it at this point of the year. Yes, and to, to have it be like a rule. Coming up next on Jalen and Jacoby, some really, really interesting footage. One of Bronny Jr.'s, LeBron's son's teammates, was live streaming from inside the James home. I don't think it was authorized by LeBron. <laughs> we'll show it to you after this. <laughs> My mom was freedom and my dad.